All right, today we talked about polynomials and different ways to find the domain of them. Okay, so first is if we're looking at rational functions. Okay, so to find the domain, we're going to look at the denominator. And your denominator cannot be zero. Okay, cannot equal zero. If it does, then that makes the whole function undefined. So that's why it cannot be zero. So let's look at an example one. So I have f of x equal to x plus one divided by x squared minus four. Okay, so I'm only looking at the denominator, so I'm going to take x squared minus 4, and this can be factored. Okay, this is factored as x plus 2 and x minus 2. Okay, the things that make this 0 are negative 2 and positive 2. That is what x cannot equal. Okay, so with the domain, I'm going to include everything except for those two numbers. So the way we do this is we go from negative infinity to negative 2 from negative 2 to 2, and from 2 to infinity. What this really means is that there's asymptotes at those points. That's where your graph will just approach it very closely, but will never cross it. Okay, So that's an, another way you can think of it. Um, so if we look at another example that's similar, um, if I have x plus 1 over x squared minus 1, Okay, I'd look at the denominator again, so I get x squared minus 1. That can be factored as x plus 1 and x minus 1. So again, my x values are negative 1 and 1, and x cannot be that. So this is where you're going to have your asymptotes at, where your graph is not going to touch, or it's going to have a gap or a hole or whatever it may be. So the domain, again, that same kind of system like that. Okay. If I only had one of these, and I would just leave this point out, so it would be from negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to infinity. Okay, So just go on it on what your x cannot be. All right, the next thing is radical functions, which are the same thing as square roots. Okay, So for the domain, in this case, the term underneath the radical cannot be negative because okay, then it would be undefined and not workable okay so if we look at this if I have f of x equal to the square root of x squared minus 9 okay I'm gonna look at I'm gonna give you a couple steps first so find where it equals 0 and then you're going to make a sign chart, which I'll explain what that is in just a second. Okay, so I'm going to take this inside and I'm going to find where that e equals to zero. Okay, well, from above, we know it's equal to zero at negative three and three. Okay, same philosophy, same process. All right, so then make, using those numbers, I'm going to create a sign chart. So I have x equals negative three and x equals three. Okay, I need to find values that are less than 3 here and plug it in to see what kind of number I get, if it's positive or negative. So negative, let's say, let's plug in negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 9 is 7. Okay, well that's a positive number. Okay, let's find a number in between negative 3 and 3. Well, the easiest one would be 0. Okay, well 0 squared is 0. 0 minus 9 is negative 9. So that's a negative number. Okay, here x equals 4, so I get 4 squared, 16 minus 9 is 7, so again that's positive. So basically what this tells me is that everywhere from here to here, and then from here to here is in my domain. Nothing here, okay, that cancels because it's all negative and won't get a correct answer. Okay, so the way, the way to write this is I'm going to go from negative infinity to negative 3, and it can include that because it can equal 0. Because square root of 0 is 0. And then from, start back up, 3 to infinity. And again, it can equal 3 because it can equal 0. Okay, what if we had a function like the previous, but this time 
it's on t the radicals on the bottom. Okay, so this is the same exact thing, but now it's on the bottom. Okay, well the only difference here is that it can't be zero because that would make it undefined. So this is same as last example. except your denominator cannot equal zero. So all I have to do is change these brackets to parentheses. And there we go, that's your domain. Okay, so same philosophy, but now because it's on the bottom, it can't be zero. All right, um, the last thing, or two more things, we have the vertical line test which most of y'all knew before today. So it's just a refresher. Um, so if I have a graph that looks like this, draw a vertical line, that's not a function because it crosses more than once. So something like this, that is a function because it only crosses once when I draw that vertical line. Um, and then your zeros, okay, those are the same thing as x-intercepts which we talked about earlier this week and last week. Um, they were on your test. This is where you plug in zero for y and solve. So set y equals zero and solve. Or you can graph it in your calculator and see where it crosses the x-axis. So there's all that stuff. Um, if you have any questions or any difficulty with this homework, please come see me in the morning. Um, and get some help. Alright, good luck with this.